The T2 Tile project is building an indefinitely scalable computational stack. Follow our progress here on T Tuesday Updates. So, check it out. This is the beginning of the next T2 demo. It's the 2D printer, or at least it's the first 2D printer demo. Uh, the little green thing is uh, the object to be copied. It's passing the swap lines through their white and black rows. You can kind of see them. Copy line by line, leave behind the children as the parent moves away. And in the very first generation, if you look close, there's a mutation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, on the one hand, I say, you know, this is obviously because I am a bad programmer. I, I'm old, I'm stupid, and all of these things. Uh, but then, you know, the bigger picture, it seems to me, is that getting perfect, uh, you know, extremely high reliability uh, copying is non-trivial when you're doing this uh, spatially distributed. You don't have, you know, app edges of memory. It's all happening in the same place. Whereas imperfect copying, which leads to evolution, is much easier to come by. So that's the motto for uh, today. Uh, evolution happens. So it's been two weeks. Uh, there's lots of news. Let's just get into it and see as fast as we can. Uh, um, we have two, uh, well, we have two new recurring donors. I, I really didn't even think that was a thing. I mean, I knew it was a thing, but I didn't think it would be a thing for the foundation. Uh, Abhinav, uh, who or, or got a nerd number a while ago, has, you know, stepped up to a recurring donation. Uh, uh, and Brian, a, a guy from, that I knew from uh, UNM days, uh, took a bunch of classes with me, did, did some of the, you know, early uh, stuff with the movable feast machine, uh, has, has reappeared <laughs> It's a monthly donor. Hi. How are you doing? Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, um, I, you know, exactly how, uh, this is all going to work out, you know, it remains to be seen, but just the feeling of, of getting support from folks. Oh, and, and I haven't sent the emails folks. So as far as is getting your actual nerd number uh, for you, Brian, it, uh, it's just because of course, uh, uh I'm terrible. Uh, um, all right, moving on. Uh, um, oh, yeah, I have been invited to, to give an invited talk at the 8th Workshop on Biological Distributed Algorithms. It's sometime in May, I think. Not that far away. It's virtual. Uh, um, invited by, you know, a, a friend, a colleague who is you know, on the committee uh, for the workshop, as uh, often is the case. Uh, we talk about, you know, the old boys network or the just old people network. And there's a lot of truth to it, but that works true for me, too. I mean, I, I would much rather <laughs> work with friends. I work with people that I know. Uh, uh, this is a little bit scary. I mean, biological distributed algorithms sounds a lot like living computation, uh, uh, and it is. Um, but my understanding of, I haven't been to one of these, is that, you know, it's biologists, real wet biologists, or the spectrum of biologists at one end, and computer scientists uh, at the other end. And the computer scientists who are, take part in this tend to be toward the more theoretical end of the spectrum. Uh, PODC, Principles of Distributed Computing, is one of the big theoretical uh, distributed computing conferences, probably the biggest one, maybe, at least as far as I know. Uh, um and I'm not at the theory end of the computer science spectrum. I'm at the systems end of the computer science spectrum. Uh, so uh, I, I don't know exactly how this is going to work out. We will find out. Stay tuned. Uh, um, uh, uh, Joey Castillo, someone I don't know, posted a tweet uh, about, you know, machine learning problems and how you like you stick a... Uh, uh, piece of paper on an Apple saying iPod, and then the vision system calls it an iPod, put a little piece of tape on a 35, and the Tesla speeds up to 85, and so on. And this reminded me of a picture that I had taken uh, way back in 2013 and posted on Google+, Plus. may it rest wherever all the Google uh, apps that get tried and dumped go to rest. Uh, so I dredged it up, and I reposted it as a reply to this, and since Joey's tweet did a uh, uh, 10,000 plus 10, I don't know, 20,000, lots of likes. Uh, I got a tailwind. And so this is it. it <laughs> yeah, um, 
robot trap. You know, I, I drove by this one day and it just sort of struck me as funny. So I took a picture of it. Uh, um, and, you know, it fits into the whole rule following uh, frame of mind uh, that we think robots would be that way. We don't really think robots would be that way, but that's the way to the traditional view of robots. And so then, in addition to everything else that's happened over the last couple of weeks, or not all of it, but the last week uh, in particularly, uh, uh, I've been kind of keeping an eye on the notifications, watching the likes come in and so forth. And, you know, with my absolute newbie Twitter nothingness, uh, this was this was fun. Uh, this is more likes than I've ever seen on a single tweet. Uh, um, and as of... Uh, this morning it was like 395 likes. So I'm, I'm betting it's going to break 400. And among all those likes, there were a bunch of people that, you know, certainly I had absolutely no connection to who followed and some of them liked and even, uh, retweeted some of the older stuff that I had done that was clearly in the living computation thing. So yeah, you know, me, the last person to get to it, of course, you know, the power of marketing, you got to get out there. Well, so I got out there a little bit. Yay. Uh, in that same spirit, uh, last T Tuesday update, 295, um, uh, you know, with our uh, club of 150 reporting in, thanks folks, uh, clicking <laughs> in the YouTube comments, uh, uh, is, is, you know, doing almost 200 views. It's uh, number one in the last 10 videos on the T Tuesday ups, uh, updates. And so that's good for what it is. We'll see whether this one can uh, match that as well. I kind of hate the fact that you're always competing with yourself and YouTube just keeps showing you how you're doing against yourself so that you cannot possibly win next week. Uh, next time the uh, standards are going to be higher because of the success of this one. Uh, uh, all of this uh, video uh, for uh, both for the, the updates and the demos and all the grid recording and everything. We are running out of disk space, so we're shopping for network attached storage. Uh, um, you know, if I was younger and, uh, more, you know, <laughs> like I used to, I would be building one of these myself, you know, a little Linux box, Raspberry Pi, who knows what it is. At this point, I'd rather throw a certain amount of money at it, uh, and, you know, get a pile of disks and have somebody else maintain it for me. We have one of these synologies a small one and and it's been it's been fine so we're looking at that uh, i'm thinking raid 10 i do not believe raid 5 6 do we have any raid uh, proponents out there what do you think i should do uh, um and uh, we have, well, so there's the, there's now two demos up on T2 demos. Uh, uh, the third one, uh, the evolution one that we saw a little bit here will be up either today or tomorrow, whenever I get through all of this. Uh, um, and step by step, uh, we now have some, some subscribers and so forth. Uh, okay. Yeah. One last point about YouTube. Uh, if anybody watches anything on YouTube, you've probably seen Neil deGrasse Tyson or the like in this ad, but you haven't seen this. Uh, um, you know, this is an ad on one of my videos. It's on the computer science, the history of computer science video, which, you know, I don't monetize. Uh, and I, I don't really want to, I never really wanted to, I mean, I don't have enough traffic. They don't even, this is a nice trick, right? Uh, I do not have an, I have enough subscribers on the Dave Ackley channel, but I don't have enough watch time hours for YouTube to say I could be a partner in their advertising. But now, and this is a relatively recent change, although they pretended it wasn't a change. Uh, uh, they are starting to put ads on videos of people that don't monetize like me. Uh, and so if the, beginning of the video is like appropriate or whatever, they'll fee free, feel free to do this. And I read about that a month or so ago, but I didn't really expect it to happen. So now I'm wondering, you know, do I need to make a new uh, little uh, intro bumper that we would put on it that would have stuff like this, you know, <laughs> just a little montage. Uh, um, and so uh, to make the, make my videos a little bit less advertiser friendly, uh, um, you know, <sighs> Or am I supposed to relax? Am I supposed to say, yes, it's okay to try to make money, even though that's not what this project is about? And I always felt it was uh, sort of a mark of honor that I wasn't trying to make money about it because I had a bigger purpose, that the goal is to change society, to change the computer science industry, and and not to make money for me. Uh, I start to wonder sometimes whether I'm going to have to try to make money in order to get anybody to take it seriously. Uh, uh, but who knows? 
we'll see what happens. That did kind of aggravate me. All right, that's the news. Um, most of the time this week, I was yak shaving on the We Are Coders Hyperspace Lecture 2, uh, which was supposed to be out January in, in January of this year, uh, uh, and it's not out yet, but I'm going to declare that the next T-Tuesday update, April 13th, is going to be this video. It'll be over on the Dave Ackley channel, but it's going to stand in as the next T-Tuesday update. So it's now on the record. It has a specific date that it's got to happen. Uh, uh, we are coders. You know, the idea is not just uh, programming, uh, like programming regular computers, but also programming each other using natural language, like English, like it's happening right now. Uh, um, and if that means we are coders, that means we're also... Uh, uh, the machine, if we're just exchanging programs with each other. So in order to understand the sort of weird coders hyperspace point of view, we have to say, well, what kind of machine are we? What is the programming platform, the architecture that we are programming for? when we are programming each other. And because the underlying hardware, the neurons and stuff are all extremely flexible. I mean, yes, they have, you know, they go where they go and they don't go where they don't go. We have optical illusions, all of this stuff that are limitations on our brain hardware, but still it's amazingly flexible so that you can implement many different kinds of virtual machines. And that fact that we have a choice about what kind of virtual machine to implement on our own wetware and on each other's wetware, each other's brain, means that there's this opportunity to say, if we say, you know, let's shift our notion, if we shift our model of what kind of machine we are, that will shift what kind of programs we can run. It's like changing one virtual machine to another. The underlying hardware could run either virtual machine, but this virtual machine allows you to write these kind of programs. This kind of virtual machine allows you to write those kind of programs. So that's the idea. What kind of machine are we? The We Are Coders approach says we are, we have four primitive operations. We can accept input from the world. We can perform steps, sequences. We can judge states of affairs, see whether we like them or not. And we can do things. We can make output. Uh, um, and this is us. Hypersubspace search and sequence limited. Uh, uh, the sequencing I mentioned, the search, you know, all this, this is going to be the subject of the other video, but the limited is to threat, to stress that number one, we have limitations and, but number two, we are a corporation. Whatever else we are as a machine, we have to make a go of it. We have to keep the system running. And that is fundamental to everything about life and to everything about how we interpret programs that we are coming from other folks and so on. So input, uh, uh, sequence, judge, output, those four things. We have to keep putting ourselves, don't forget them. We have to keep working on advertising them in a sense. We have to make them as simple as we possibly can. So I made a little symbol. Uh, it's got a, it's got a bunch of arrows, the input arrow. Where's my thing? Uh, uh, input. Uh, coming into the center, the sequence, it goes around, the arrow goes up around and comes back down. The judgment arrow, things are bad, things are good. And the output arrow, uh, like that. So this I call the self-image. This is the machine that we're programming for. It's a cartoon. It's an advertising slogan for it. Uh, it's a logo. And so, yeah, so I made it. And, and so here it is. Input, sequence. Judge negative, judge positive, and output. And so, you know, I may, I did this several months ago, uh, in 2020, actually. Uh, um, and, you know, I've even, I've even got some, some cu couple little, little one of these things printed up at Shapeways and metal and stuff like that. So I've, I've been living with the self image for a while here. Uh, um, and, and I like it pretty well. Uh, and I also said, you know, geez, this prusament clear filament, and that's an example of it. It doesn't end up transparent because it's still 3D printed, but it lets light shine through. And I have this whole reel of these tiny little programmable multicolor LEDs. And I thought, hey, I could take a bunch of those LEDs, put them behind one of these transparent. Well, this is white but one using the transparent filament, the clear filament, and have, you know, animations of here's the input happening, here's the sequence happening, and so forth. So I decided to go for it, put a whole bunch of them around the thing, and so on. So that's what I was spending a 
a lot of time about, which meant I'm back to hardware. It's been a long time, but I put together uh, a quick schematic. It's really just, you know, a chain, a, a daisy chain of these uh, little circuits, uh, these little LEDs. You just run three wires from one to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next, uh, and put down a... a uh, uh, a capacitor every so often, maybe. Uh, uh, and I took the 3D model for the self image and flattened it out and, uh, made it into a circuit board. Uh, eventually I went back and I shrunk it and rounded it off so that the circuit board was a bit smaller than this thing. So hopefully it'll fit in behind and it'll all work out. Uh, uh and I laid out the, uh, the pixels, the, uh, LEDs on it and did the traces and so forth. I sent it off to, PCB way, the uh, place that I'm most comfortable with, because I did, uh, I used them for the T2 tile boards, and they just marched through all the steps. Uh, uh, solder mask, routing, delivery ready, uh, DHL, and uh, wham, here it is. You know, here's <laughs> the box. Uh, uh, and, you know, it's too much time to go into, but there's a I had a freebie. I had leftover credits at PCB way because they give you these little, you know, uh, uh, beans, they call them. Uh, and that allowed me to actually get two of these Raspberry Pi Picos, tiny little, uh, uh, there's a, there's a picture of one, you know, they're, they're not full Linux boxes and so forth, but who needs that for the purposes of driving some LEDs? So I got a couple of these free thrown in the box, uh, uh, and I'm thinking of trying to figure out how to use that uh, to drive the uh, self-image, the animated self-image, we'll see. And there it is. Indeed, it fits uh, inside the footprint of the real thing, and I've been working on a controller, which I will spare you the details, but, you know, so here it is for, for uh, running the thing, saying we're doing input, we're doing sequence, and so forth. So, hopefully that ends up being good, uh, uh, but that's what it is. Uh, uh, all right, I'm going to skip over most of this because it, it's uh, nerdy, and, you know, basically it's... I. I you know, while I was not listen, looking on Twitter to see how many likes I've gotten, while I was not hitting refresh to see whether the circuit boards have been mailed to me yet, I was trying to uh, implement this 2D printer uh, that I mentioned last time. And I am now on something like the, my fifth generation approach. And the one that's in the T2 demo that we saw at the beginning was generation three, I think. Uh, uh, three, maybe it's four. Um, and I've learned a ton, and I'm really kind of excited about it, but it is pretty nerdy. Uh, um, so, you know, it's all just piles of text. I'm just going to skip through it because it's piles of text. See, uh, I don't know what that was. Uh, so the basic idea, again, I took uh, um, the uh, the this thing called grass from uh, a UNM computer science class project. I had a, a, a lifey project that I used to do called Frob World that had uh, grass and, and things that would eat it and so forth. And the grass grew in a particular rule to say, you know, as long as you don't have two neighbors, if you have, if you have only one neighbor, you can grow. Uh, uh, so this one, everybody has two neighbors except the, the very tips in this particular case. And I modified this grass so it can only get so big. Uh, uh, so this thing doesn't grow any further, even though, according to the original frog grass rules, it could grow until it had two neighbors. Uh, and I use that as the subject for the thing to be copied. And it surrounds it with this plating, and it uses it to measure the thing, and it sends out a copy of the plate, the build plate for the 2D printer, which is basically saying, trying to reserve space, saying, you know, if I, I I'm going to need to move the parent this far in order to leave a copy behind in the kid. And if that's not all empty, then things Things might go wrong. So it, it figures out how much space it needs and sends out the build, it builds the build plate. Uh, and only once the build plate has been successfully constructed, does it actually start the copying process, or at least that was what was supposed to happen. The version that's in the T2 demos still has some bugs, but again, the bugs are kind of interesting. You know, it's like the, the Morris worm, one of the earliest computer security failures, uh, actually has a bunch of bugs 
in it, but Morris, the guy that wrote it, lost control of it before he finished debugging it. You know, he was trying really careful to, you know, these things are dangerous in principle. They, they have gain. Uh, they, they say, you know, show me a computer. Just let me talk to it. I will use my hypnotic seance on it. And now all of a sudden you're enslaved to me and you start uh, saying the magic seance to somebody else. Uh, um, so to think that we're going to end up with a perfect copy that hasn't got any bugs that won't cause evolution to happen seems kind of silly and i'm continuing to work i think my fifth generation thing is gonna it's gonna <laughs> uh, uh it's the one that's gonna actually get it right we shall see what what we shall see but we're not there yet uh, uh and so there's some pictures of it uh, after it's all gone wrong i mean if we look at this you see several different shapes of squiggly uh grass is in there even though it started from one piece of grass so clearly something has changed uh, uh all right and so that's that's it basically um and the rest of it you can see in the uh, t2 demo that'll be up uh, um I'm kind of excited about it. I, I think it really, you know, it's, I, I think it's really fascinating to look at. There's just so much stuff going on everywhere all over the place. Uh, um, so that's progress, I think. So in two weeks, not a T Tuesday update, but lecture two of the Hyperspace uh, uh, Academy 101 introduction to classical hyperspace hyper subspaces uh, uh we'll see how it goes uh and then i will be back for a regular t tuesday update uh, two weeks after that we are closing in by the way on t tuesday 3 100 which will be the 100th episode and according to you know the VisaCon and all the uh, stuff on the internet and uh, i'm supposed to be good at this after doing <laughs> hundred of them uh what do you think how are we doing i hope you're okay uh things are going all right here i finally got my first shot well finally i was lucky enough to get my first shot of the uh virus the vaccine for the virus uh, um step by step hope you're doing all well see you in a couple of weeks <laughs>